Hey everyone, just want to take a quick moment and let you know of a few ways you can help support the show. First, you can like this video and subscribe to our channel if you enjoy the content we're putting out. Share this episode with other creatives and help spread the word. Next, you can go to creativesideup.com. That'll take you over to our Ko-fi page where you have the ability to drop us a few bucks and help support independent creators like myself so we can bring you more episodes and feature even more creatives. Additionally, you can go to anchor.fm slash edgeline studios and have access to everywhere the podcast is available. And if you'd like, you can tap the support button and become a supporter with a small monthly donation to help sustain future episodes. Finally, follow us on Instagram at creative side up pod. Join the conversation, send us a voice message, share your story with us. We want to know what do you do creatively and what inspires you to do it. Your message could be featured on an upcoming episode of Creative Side Up. So thank you for all your support. And now back to the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Creative Side Up. Thanks for joining us. My name is Tim Olson, and this is the show where we unpack creative minds. Today, my guest is sports photographer David Sluka. We finally sat in here about two minutes of just waiting for Dave to get settled. Are you settled now? I'm settled. Now, we, we've known each other for a very long time. Uh, we, 2005, we, 2006? Yeah, we've worked on quite a few projects together. And uh, in that time, it's been a rough relationship. It's had its ups, it's had its downs. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you grow. See me grow and see you uh, get gray, you know? Yeah, that's no kidding. <laughs> You know, the interesting thing, though, um, that I've I've known about you and gotten to know about you is you are, you know, you're primarily a sports photographer, but um, you do a lot of other stuff, too. You're not someone who's afraid to jump in and learn video work or do experimentation with with iPhone photos. You've had a whole gallery of of iPhone photos that you take. You you you're you're you know, if when you travel, you're filming the. Uh, what are the greats that you take pictures of? What are those? Manhole covers. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to Manhole Covers. Uh, you're my first and only guest. Hashtag Manhole Covers. <laughs> not manholes. No, not well. Not. <laughs> you know that's a, that's that's another show, but <laughs> um, no. But it's just interesting because while you are primarily a sports photographer, you find yourself kind of adventuring out and, and messing around and doing other things too. So. I'm curious as to where, uh, first of all, maybe share um, a little bit of your background in sports photography. I said a little bit. Dave's a, a <laughs> bit of a, uh, he'll, he has the gift of gab, as they say. <laughs> so maybe share a little bit of your background in sports photography and then um, how that leads creatively into some of the other work that you, that you do as well. Um, when I was young, uh, 12, 10, that age. He was born that morning. <laughs> and <laughs> I was a big NFL fan. Yeah. And uh, I, I remember the sports photography part. I think I was 12 and I got a, there was a, it was probably after Christmas and he got one of those sales on the calendars and it was the Turner calendars. And um, there was a Chicago Bears. I hated the Chicago Bears, but, um, but the photography in it was amazing. And, uh, and I just. Was it a book or what? Was no, it was, a, it was a calendar. Oh, calendar. And, and uh, um, just the photography in it was amazing. And I always wanted to be, you know, uh, as a kid, you always want to, you know, play football or whatever. And uh, the NFL drew me in. and uh, You were I, drafting the NFL as yeah. a kid. <laughs> you were that good. And then uh, <laughs> photography, I grew up in the country. Um, we didn't have a lot of uh, neighborhood kids. And so you spend a lot of time uh, by yourself um, playing football by yourself, punting the ball up in the air, catching it, uh, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, and, and then photography, uh, there was a lot of wildlife stuff and, uh, um, my grandmother gave me an old, it's like a 126 camera. Um, and I thought I wanted to be a wildlife photographer and, uh, and then, did uh, you have a sense at that time though, like that could be a job? Um, you know, kind of looking back, I, it was one of those things we had, um, hundreds of acres behind our house and, and, uh, had a mini bike and would, ex I'd explore back there. And, uh, there was a beaver pond and, and, uh, you know, I remember taking the camera out there and, uh, just all the wildlife, you know, the geese and cranes and beavers and, and, uh, and stuff like that. And, and it was always just fascinating. 
and um, and, and then, you didn't have you know you you weren't messing around with top notch gear at the time. no no and and you also had film and, and yeah so that was you know film today with iPhones you know I think would have probably run thirty eight thousand forty thousand photos on my iPhone. Um, how many. He's checking to see how many photos yeah. he has. He's not thirty nine thousand four hundred fifty nine. Wow! Uh, um, You're make, almost at that forty thousand mark. Let's make that sixty. Oh, he's doing a selfie right now. Here we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> nice. Oh, look at that! Just wait a minute. What happened? He's always. I, I put my hat. He's always my hat, with my hat is right. <laughs> hat on hat action there. Nice. <laughs> with the Freddy Krueger the, the, back there. The Tilly, <laughs> my, the Tilly hat. Well, and we'll get to that, but. <clears> um, uh, by so, the way, every time you put your feet down, it's hitting the oh, stand yeah. a little bit. Okay. So settle in I'll here, folks. It. Let's settle in. <laughs> Told you I should. Yeah. Shoes off. No, but that calendar that of the of the uh, bears. Why was that such a um, a mark? Uh, just the photography, you know. Game action. You, you game action. It, it drew you in closer. I, I think one of the things that um, that I like, um, and, and I think people comment the most about, is the behind the scenes stuff. Stuff that I'm put in places that nobody gets access to. Mm -hmm. um, the other day, I was um, it was the Badgers are playing Maryland, and and uh, um, I poked my camera in uh, into the huddle, and and people don't see that. People, you know, uh, of course they see on TV the the exterior, but yeah, they don't the exterior get of it. But but being in there, I I, mean, I try to get in and out as fast yeah. as I can. I don't want to be seen, um, but people like to see you know you're in that huddle and and what goes on in there you know mm -hmm. and uh the behind the scenes stuff the stuff you know you take for granted you know you, you go to the coal center game day it was on tuesday and we get there early we pull in and drop off our gear and uh, my my longtime assistant uh tim hughes um he gets the gear going i go park the car i come in and then i have to go up in the catwalk it's a lot of miles. Uh, a basketball game, just walking around that coal center is, you know, three to four miles uh, of walking, and yeah. for a basketball game, and uh, and and there's just the behind the scenes stuff. You, you, all the people behind the scenes. It's amazing how many people it takes to put on an event, um, and and those are little things that you know the average person never sees. Yeah, and some of that stuff is also. Um just an experience, a personal experience that you're having because you are taking, I mean, you do take wide shots of the entire event, uh, you know, a full stadium. Um, but a lot of the behind the scenes stuff too, you mentioned the cat, like catwalk, that's a personal experience that you're having. But I, I see like you taking pictures of like a game winning shot and the expression on everyone's face, yeah. including the players. And sometimes the crowd, missing the game winning shot. And sometimes shot. missing, yeah, <laughs> missing the shot, but whatever it is, there's it. an emotion behind it that, you know, we live that moment once for yeah, real yeah. and you're able to capture it and provide us with a memory of, yeah. of that moment. Yeah, and being, I missed the shot um, on Tuesday, the game winning shot. I wasn't going to talk about this, but. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it happens the and, yeah, and the real. guy next to me got it, yeah. you know, and, and I, I watched the video and I watched it over and over and over and over and over. And I'm like, how did I miss it? Why did I miss it? And, and I'm watching. And then I realized the referee blocked me. Um, and then as the referee stepped out of the way and the shot opened up, uh, the, the, the guy that inbound the ball stepped in front of me there and mm -hmm. the guy next to me was just enough angle to, to get around it. And, and as soon as he hit the shot, you watch me and I quick yeah. switch to, yeah. to the bench to get yeah. the reaction. You miss yeah. the action, you get the reaction. And you and, know, what's interesting, Dave is I like specifically, we're talking about a basketball game right now, but you do so many sports, but I, I noticed like, regardless of what the sport is, because you've done it for a while, there are certain areas within that timeline of the event that are just kind of like, um, I don't want to say machine work, but you know, when that, when the game's over and the whistle blows, you're immediately on the court, you know where to, to beeline to. Like if you're, if you're doing a football game, you know, the quarterbacks are going to shake hands. So yeah. you're out there, you know where you got to go, but there's also these, these small moments in between where you are, um, you have more creative freedom to kind of get something you haven't seen before or provide us with a moment that we're not used to seeing. Oh, you know, we, we go to a game and maybe we're sitting up high and we're seeing a, a wide shot of the stadium full. We know it's full when we're there. We even see it on TV, but to just get a sense of how many people are there to watch this one game, yeah. that's something creatively you're doing in between these other, um, 
I, should I say required moments, just something mm. that, that, that you're, you're doing because that's, those are photos that, that sell. Yeah. The, the thing, the other thing that always amazes me, um, I did a project, it was kind of a self project that I did. Um, and I was shooting portraits on white seamless. And when I first started doing it, people were asking me what I was doing. And, and I said, I don't know. Um, I haven't figured it out yet, but as I, uh, I set it up, uh, and I, I set it up for the basketball team, and, and I was told that we didn't have time to do that. And I, I'm like, it took me an hour to set it up. And a couple of security guards were like, hey, what about our picture? You know, and, and I go, stand in there. I needed somebody to stand in to mm -hmm. take the picture. Mm -hmm. and, and then when I was told that I couldn't shoot the basketball team, um, I just started picking people out of the stands and, and band members are walking through. And, yeah. and, and I, I call them personality portraits. And they, they kind of grew. Um, and, uh, the, but the thing, I, 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 uh, there was a magazine called Inside Wisconsin Sports. And I said, hey, I, got, I have this series of portraits. And literally I had 200 people from the Kohl Center. Um, and I called them Faces of the Kohl Center. And as I realized taking the photos, there are so many people there and their purpose there is so different there's not you know you have coaches you have staff you have you know people behind the scenes you have people that are there that have never been to a basketball game before you mm -hmm. have the fan that goes to every game and um event coordinators I event mean, coordinators on, i mean it yeah. just goes on and on and on and and literally there's seventeen thousand five hundred different yeah. people there and, and it's not just on the on the court or where you're watching the game happen there's tech crews in mixing rooms yeah. there's there's other rooms behind the scenes that are, that require uh staff to be a part of in order to make the event run yeah. successfully um but i bring that up because you know you've been nice enough to let me assist on on uh games that you've done and something i realize is when when i watch you work you're you're um you you have a way of 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 communicating and and talking to people for the most part, yeah. <laughs> um, where you're able to walk up to somebody and who maybe you've never met before, and it feels like you know in the way that you speak to them, like you've known each other for a long time. Yeah, and I, you know I, that that's part of the, your job is communicating with. It's a it's a gift and it's a curse. <laughs> <laughs> I I joke about it, but I but I've also. I've embraced it and, yeah. and I meet complete strangers yeah. and I was coming back from Minnesota and I, I'm this guy walks in, I, he looked familiar yeah. and I said, you look familiar. Do I know you from somewhere? And he's like, Oh no, I'm from New York. Yeah. And I go, Oh, you, you know, you look like somebody. And he's like, well, I'm originally from Illinois and I went to school in Illinois. So my next question is uh, where in Illinois? He's like, yeah. Byron, Illinois. I'm like I, I grew up in uh, Beloit right on the border. Yeah. And so, you know, so we started drawing in there and he, and you, you try to find connections. And, and somehow he said, well, my family is in horse racing, harness racing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, my aunt and uncle were into harness racing. You know, and what was your you know, aunt and uncle's name? And, and uh, you know, I, I said the name. And he's like, oh, my God, we know them. You know, and, <laughs> and, and all of a sudden you have this connection. Yeah. You know, and, and literally like separation of Kevin Bacon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Kevin Bacon. I'm, I'm three. Oh, come on. You know, no, I am. I'm <laughs> okay. or my two. Or oh whatever. my God. Um, most people are two yeah. or three. When yeah. they, when you get these connections, yeah. they say the six, it's, well, it's, it's more like three to four. But, but I mean, the connections are such an important asset to what you do because specifically for a game, um, you're mentioning the behind the scenes stuff, but there's things that I mentioned to people now having assisted you um, that, you know, and I'm not, I, I'm saying it as someone who's interested in behind the scenes of anything, you know, we watch a game, but we don't realize it's set up much like a movie set up in that, you know, it takes time and preparation and that there's planned, everything is planned except for the game itself, yeah. uh, you know, but, <laughs> you know people get upset at refs or whatever but oh, yeah. you know but anyway um i bring this up because you are you know you're talking to the mascots you're talking to the guys know you yeah. you know the mask the people who are you know maybe as as bucky badger they know you you know so yeah. they know to, you know to wave them down and they know what you're asking for without actually physically asking for something i try to i try it's hard i'm a uh what's the word um, I recognize people. I don't yeah. re necessarily know their names or what. I try to learn their names. Yeah. Um, it's hard when you're meeting yeah. thousands of people. 
But one of the things is you you try to uh, the security guard the the person the fan in the stand. There's you try to make a connection, and sometimes those come back, and they help you. You're in a situation that you need something, and and uh, you know there there's that's very beneficial to what I do. Um, there there was a security guard one time at the Packers and, and I, I got my, I had a point and shoot camera and I go to take a picture on the sideline and he comes up and he goes, sir, you're not allowed to use that camera. And I, I go, I'm, I'm a professional photographer. And they said, no point and shoot cameras on the sideline. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, uh, but I'm a professional. Yeah, and, yeah. and anyway, I joke cause I, I kept arguing with the guy like, you know, Hey, he was actually a rep from Canon. Yeah. <laughs> and, was, uh, uh, anyway, the funny thing was, um, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm getting nowhere with this. Let it go. Yeah. I'll talk to the Packers, you know, and they talk to them and they go, oh, no, they meant somebody that's not yeah. a professional. So yeah. anyway, and then the guy and I became really good friends. And, yeah. and uh, you know, we always joke about that, you know. Um, but it, but it, that's a connection of a person. Yeah. It was a situation that he said I couldn't do something and, and I'm arguing with them and I like to, you know. But it be, ended up being positive. It ended up being positive. The, the, and there's been so many times like that that I've been with you at least where whether it's a fan in the stand who's made crazy hats mm-hmm. and all of a sudden something that was so obscure yeah. became a relationship with somebody. Yeah. And, and sometimes you have to realize like that one I can't kept pushing it and and I pushed it to the point where we became friends yeah. but there's also times that you're in a situation and you're trying to make your point and they're trying to make their point and you realize you're in a no-win situation and and yeah. those are the things you have to learn you know when I was younger I didn't <laughs> understand those and I tried to push them I remember one time one of my friends got singled out for some reason at a game and the security guard was photographer friend yeah, and the the security guide was was hell bent on making this the most miserable day of his photographer's <laughs> life, and I tried I tried I to get in I tried bit. to get in a couple times to help him out, and I realized oh man this is not a good situation. Yeah, and uh, you know I, I I came aside I said hey if you need something I'm not gonna get with this guy and <laughs> you know but but uh, if you need help I I saw the situation but you and, do make an effort to make connections with oh people yeah. and it's not just because you're taking their photo but it may be the equipment manager or it may be you know we were working on a shoot together at at Lambo and you know you had right. you brought me along as an assistant and um, you knew the equipment manager oh yeah. and we were able you know once we finished our shoot we were already there you were just seeing I don't know if he's working today yeah. I don't know when he was and and you know he's excited to see you oh, and yeah. he's bringing us in and, and oh yeah and th- the those are those are little things that you know you that takes time to develop yeah, those yeah. relationships and th- and those that relationship there um is another example of um of uh when when Favre threw uh his 421st touchdown pass it was an nfl record breaking dan marino and uh the equipment manager uh red batty is his name and long time and he's a big historian he's a big big fan of the game and um he was waiting in the end zone so basically Favre throws the pass and um i had dreams of that <laughs> that play <laughs> minnesota the, the old dome was a yeah. was a terrible place to shoot and i had a dream the other end of the end zone the other end was really dark and i, I had dreams that it was going to happen there and anything anyways it happened in the end zone with the light and anyway Favre throws the pass um the lineman in front of him fell down and it allowed me to get the the throw and uh and then uh, uh what was his name number 85 i can't even think of his name anymore this is um, the first name you haven't yeah, remembered <laughs> he's watching yeah, right I, know, now. By, I know numbers this guy's watching great wasn't it greg so, i don't know whatever you know it was greg i remember no, i don't know uh <laughs> But and what did he do? Though? He caught the pass, yeah. and he took two steps, and Red Batty was like standing at the goalpost, the and he grabbed the ball to secure the ball for the NFL Hall of Fame. Oh wow! And uh, and a few weeks later, um, you know, I had that shot. I had I had the throw. I had two shots of the throw. I had the catch, and then you see Red uh, grabbing the ball, and and I, I remember seeing him like it might have been, even been the next year. I said, Hey, Red, I I got this picture, um, you know, Favre throwing the pass and and the catch and. And then you having the ball, and he's like, "Oh, yeah, do you really, man?" You know, and and I remember 
that was very special to him and yeah. and it, it actually was a it was a huge moment in NFL history and and I, I I got him photos of that and and man he went out of his way to do things and and that comes back to um I'm at a game and it's raining out and I, I didn't have a towel and you know I he's the equipment manager and you know I read do you have a towel I can you know and he, he goes yeah. out of his way to to get you something because you you did something for him and and that's that's what I I try to do is you try to um people go out of their way for you yeah. you know and and sometimes it's nice uh, the other way around and 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 things I don't you you see things of 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 a fan that's the first time they've ever been to a game and those pictures mean a lot to 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 you know to those people and sometimes it's it's you know the father son and the father passes away years later and that son still has that picture and and they remember those things you you have one of the things i remember um we used to have photo albums growing up and you forget a lot of history but when you visually see the photo, everything comes back together and you remember, now you remember it. And it's almost the photo, without the photo, sometimes those memories just fade away. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and uh, that's, that's one of the things that as a photographer, you're almost a historian in, in, a, in a sense. Um, it's just happening it's because just happening. the events are unfolding as you're there and yeah. you're in a completely different mindset going into a game because you have a, you know what your responsibility is, but, um, because, you know, like for example, I've, I've worked in, in live sports and filming live sports and, you know, doing video production. And again, I've assisted you with, with, with the games you've gone to, um, and do you ever get like people asking you about specific things in a game and, and you just can't recall? You're like, you yeah, got to go I back mean, to the photos and look because I say that because I, you know, I've, I, there's been many times where people say, man, how about that score? Or how about that ref call? How about that? In my head, isn't in a completely different yeah. space when I'm at an event. Yeah, well, you're, when, when I'm at a, a football game and you're on the sideline, you're not hearing the game. You're not hearing right. the calls. You're not hearing right. all that. You're right. missing things. But I'm seeing things that most people don't see. And right. and there there was a <laughs> one of my favorite stories. Um, Tom Brady, the uh, Packers were playing uh, the Patriots, and it was a cold. It was a cold November Sunday at Lambeau Field. <laughs> and uh, anyway, um, Brady was warming up on the sideline right behind. You know, I turn around, I go, oh, "There's Brady." Um, no big deal. And, and he backs up to throw and a hand warmer falls out of his pocket mm. and, and I pick it up and I'm like, Oh, I'll hand it to Tom. <laughs> and, you know, and, 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 uh, he's really going to need that. Yeah, exactly. And, and all of a sudden he steps away and I go, ah, screw it. He let him, let his hands freeze. <laughs> and in the next series, he drops back to pass and the two defensive ends hit him at the same time, mm -hmm. picked him up and dropped him on his back. And I got the picture um, and, uh, y you know, of him with these two guys picking him up yeah. and, and I, and I remembered, you know, it was just funny or whatever. Well, anyway, I'm like, I'm telling this story and I go, no, one's going to believe this, <laughs> you know, you know, no one's going to believe this. Yeah. And my buddy, the, the, the frozen tundra of Lambeau field, the, the tundra man is a really good friend of mine. And he sent me a picture on the sideline. Um, is that and, Jeff? Yeah, yeah, and he sent a picture of me looking at Brady. A picture of you? <laughs> yeah, a picture of he me. He took on his phone or something? No, no, no. I think it was on AP or it was oh on, my God. it might have been on TV or whatever. That's hilarious. But it, it was a picture of Brady warming up with me looking behind. Oh, my God. And, and so I'm like, hey, I got proof. You know, somebody <laughs> um, one time, they go, they said, uh, they go, you tell a lot of stories. That's bullshit. I don't believe a word you say. And, and I laughed and I go, <laughs> Yeah, I do tell a lot of stories that I go, but they are true. I may fabricate them a little bit or embellish a little bit yeah. to make them storytellers. But, yeah, but, it uh, actually wasn't Tom Brady. It was a lineman <laughs> who uh, <Yeah. laughs> got benched. Um, um, but, no, but no, that's that's really interesting because you're, like we said, this is a live event. These are live events that you're covering where anything could happen. Yeah. And your job is to to capture that event, regardless of whether it's a good call, a bad call, a good outcome, a bad outcome, yeah. and you're catching those moments in between, the crowd reacting. Yeah. You're you're approaching the event with a different eye. I always say um, it was a term that I heard: action reaction. Mm -hmm. um, you sometimes you miss the action, you get the reaction. 
um, or vice versa, you get the action. Um, but but for every action, there's a reaction, yeah. and and so th- that's one of the things that um, you have to. And, and dig- digital is so different than film days. Film days, you had all this extra time because you didn't, you weren't looking at f- photos on the back of your camera, and everybody yeah. chimps and looks at things. And and a lot of times, um, it doesn't matter. You know, you want to see if you got it or not. Did I get it? Did I get it? It doesn't matter. You either got it or you didn't. Yeah. Move on. Get the next. You know, or or, or look for something. Uh, you know, there's a lot of times that you miss things when you're looking at the back of your camera. Yeah. And I remember my favorite. Play. Rookie mistake. Yeah. My favorite yeah. play was, um, uh, it was 2006. It, Favre was talking retirement. He was having a bad year. It was week six. I don't, I remember some things. Um, it was week six. They were playing the Cardinals. Beautiful light at Lambeau Field um, before they I had all those additions. And um, Favre was, they were down on the goal line and he rolled out to the right. And I was like, oh man, I just need him to come this way. And he, he comes running this way, and it's the most gorgeous light. And he, he's running, and he's pointing, and it looks like he's pointing at me. And he comes over, and part of the stadium, the, the, the end zone was in the shadow. And uh, he, he dives in, and I got blocked on that part. Um, and he dives in, and, and he gets up, and he runs over, and he jumps up into Mark Towser's arms. And it was in full shadow over there, and I'm set up for full sunlight. And so I'm, I'm just sitting there. And, uh, and I was studying mindfulness at the time. So, so it was, it was kind of a really quiet moment for me. The stadium's going nuts. And all of a sudden he runs over and he jumps up into Tony mall. He was a rookie lineman for the Packers and he jumps up into his arms and, and it's this, you know, uh, jubilation shot. Yeah. And, 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 and then there, I got two frames of that one up and then one down. And then he got up and then all of a sudden the players are like Lambo leap and, and a lot of people don't realize this. Brett Favre only did one Lambo leap, <laughs> and it was—I call it the worst Lambo leap in the history of Lambo leaps. Um, and uh, it was during that game. Yeah, it was during. It was right on that play. Yeah. So I got these great action shots of him running, and and then <clears throat> I got—I missed the shot of him scoring. I missed the shot of him in Towser's arms, and then he runs up into this rookie's arms, and and then and then he did the Lambo leap, and. And after the game, I'm trying to identify who this this lineman is. I don't, I don't. He couldn't see his number. Who is this guy? And and I remember asking somebody, "Go, oh, that's Towser." And I'm like, "That's not Towser. I know what Towser looks like." Yeah. And uh, Towser was in the shadow. And yeah. I go, "This is in the sun." And the and the guy goes, "That didn't happen." And I go, "Yeah, yes, it did." You got the I photo go, of it. "I got the photo." And the video. It, one of the things I used to edit um, after the game you know, like the next week, day or whatever week. And I would play ESPN and they'd show highlights. And, and it was amazing the times that I'd be editing a play and the, and the highlight would come up. And that shot, when he jumped up in the lineman's arm, lasted less than a second. It mm-hmm. literally, and, and a lot of the one guy that said it didn't happen, he was probably looking at the photos of Towser and, <laughs> and the shots of him diving into the end zone. And, and he missed it, you know. And I was just sitting there. I was, like I said, I was, I was studying mindfulness, and I was in the moment. And it, it, to me, it was, I call it a quiet moment. There was all this chaos, you know, 78,000 people or whatever it was at the time that were cheering and, and going nuts. And, and I was just observing, and, and all of a sudden this happened. And I'm like, oh, get that shot. And when you watch it on the video, and it literally lasted one second, if you were not paying attention, you, you know, I saw that. it about to happen, and I and I made the photo, and and the the frame was like full frame. It was it was just a great lucky. You know, I, do you say lucky? I was in the right place at the right time. Hey everyone, just want to take a quick moment and let you know of a few ways you can help support the show. First, you can like this video and subscribe to our channel if you enjoy the content we're putting out. Share this episode with other creatives and help spread the word. Next, you can go to creativesideup.com. That'll take you over to our Kofi page where you have the ability to drop us a few bucks and help support independent creators like myself so we can bring you more episodes and feature even more creatives. Additionally, you can go to anchor.fm slash edgeline studios and have access to everywhere the podcast is available. And if you'd like, you can tap the support button and become a supporter with a small monthly donation to help sustain future episodes. Finally, follow us on Instagram at creative side up pod. Join the conversation. Send us a voice message. 
Share your story with us. We want to know what do you do creatively and what inspires you to do it. Your message could be featured on an upcoming episode of Creative Side Up. So thank you for all your support. And now back to the show. You know, you look back at photos, you don't remember a lot of things, but, you know, certain plays you remember. And that play with Favre, um, he was having a bad year. Um, he was talking retirement in 2006. And, and um, um, he had this incredible game. Um, and, and, and you saw the passion that he had. And, and that was, I remember, I go, he's not retiring, you know, this year. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and uh, um, obviously. Coming off the back of like yeah. such an awesome. Yeah. And, yeah. And, but anyway, you, you could see the passion of this guy. The thing I loved about Favre, you know, I photographed him for 16 years, photographed his first practice, yeah. um, shot it in black and white film, um, is the guy like celebrated <laughs> Every single pass. It was like, it, to me, I don't know if you saw the panda lady. Um, uh, at the, there's this woman that... They bring that, talent out uh, yeah, at the basketball and, games yeah. to, for halftime and, entertainment. And, and I've been watching her for years. Yeah. And, and every time she does it, you know, she tosses these bowls up into the air and she catches them on her head. And you she's forgot on a, a big part. She's, she's, on on a a uni, she's on a unicycle. Yeah. And, and she does it and she's like, oh. Yeah. Like I, I did it, you know, yeah. and, and then, you know, and then she's very proud. Yeah. And, but Favre did the same thing. Every time he threw a touchdown pass, he, it was like the first one he ever threw in his life. And, yeah. and, and we had, um, you know, and that was, um, the beauty of Favre was you forgot, you know, he had throw four interceptions in a game, but he'd still throw the winning touchdown. And, yeah. and, uh, and that's what I, I loved about Favre and, uh, if you go onto my website and you type in Favre celebrates, I have like 200 shots of, <laughs> of Brett doing this, and and every one of them, he he actually had a pattern. There were there were a lot of people, people were really into the Lambo leaps at the time, and I I didn't photograph Lambo leaps at first because I was always photographing Favre. So yeah. um, everybody would say, how do you get those shots of Favre doing this? And I said, and I laughed, and I go, well, you know when you, when you photograph that Lambo leap, and he's like, yeah, and I go. Well, it happens right then, and I go. You got to pick one or the other. Yeah. And and I realized that Favre was this magical quarterback. There's a whole um, series. Exactly. I, yeah. I made a living off of him, and <clears throat> he um literally he would throw the pass, and he would do this. And he yeah. would look over at the sideline, and then he'd go over here, and he'd yeah. look, and then he would look up to his wife, and it was one, yeah. two, three, done. Yeah. And it was over. And and so people were like, how do you get these? I could just sit next Pattern to Pattern recognition. Exactly. And You've gone to enough. Yeah. You see it happen over and, and over and again. And one of, one of my, I have a lot of favorite stories. One of them, yeah. uh, we, uh, my buddy Ross and I get to a game late and and uh, we were really late to a game in Chicago. And Fourth quarter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was late and literally there was no parking available uh -huh. anywhere. There and, never is at that and, time. And it was, wow. it, the closest was two miles away. And yeah. so, or the house across the exactly. street. For so I'm like, let's drop our gear off <laughs> and, and I'll go park the car and, and get back. Yeah. And, and I, I pull up and I said, uh, I, I pulled out my old Super Bowl credential and it said, it had my name and it said, NFL photos on it. And I yeah. come up to the security guard and I go, excuse me, sir. I go, uh, I'm with NFL photos. And he goes, oh, right this way. And I'm like, yeah. I, look at, I look at Ross and he's <laughs> letting us drive into the stadium. <laughs> and we're like looking at each other going, what? No, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. And I think he, he th I think, he, I mean, not that you weren't he, supposed to be there, exactly. but, you're... but he thought we were NFL films. Yeah. And so yeah. anyway, we put, we pulled down in into the stadium, yeah, and uh, and and we parked the car and we're getting out and the guy goes the guy security guard comes up and he goes sorry you can't stay there and we said yeah we know yeah. we're just dropping off gear and stuff and uh, Mike McCaskey the owner of the Bears pulls up next to us gets out of the car hello yeah you know? <laughs> and you know we're we're like oh we're you were able to jump right we're in. not supposed to be here and so so anyway we 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 drop the gear off and I'm getting yeah. ready to leave and I I look at the security guard and I go sir there is no parking anywhere close to here i go can you help us out at all and he goes well you can't park down here and he goes hold on a second gets on the radio and he's like all right just go up this ramp and then park right inside there and it was like at the time it was like 25 dollars parking yeah and there's no parking you know yeah. so we parked there and it was a cold rainy november day and and uh anyway at the end of the game um uh the packers 
um, Favre hands the ball off like on the 25, 26 yard line, and it was a sweep, and they score. And Brett turns, looks at us, his arms up in the air. My buddy's right <laughs> next to me, and and he's all excited because he, you know, he wanted to get he got these the photos. Shot. He got the yeah. shot. But all of a sudden, he's like, something's wrong with my camera. My camera's not working. Oh my god. And and uh, anyway, and and all of a sudden, the Bears turn the ball over, and they're on the 26 yard line, and they ha- they do the same play. <clears throat> And the same sweep, and they score again, literally within two minutes of. Wow! And 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 he drops to his knees, and he's like looking right at us with his arms. Now up that in the is air. rare. Yeah, and yeah. and my I'm hoping my buddy's gonna get this shot. Yeah. You know, his camera was broken, and it, and, it, oh, and, and no. he, he missed both of them. But anyway, after the game, where and everybody was asking, where did you guys park? And I'm like, oh yeah, we parked way over there. <laughs> you know, and, and we're like, we're not telling anybody. Getting some royal treatment yeah, there, exactly. With this Luca charm. So anyway, we 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 were joking. We're walking back to the car, and I go, oh, security's gonna have our car towed. You know, whatever. We get in the car. <laughs> and the tires are removed yeah. <laughs> we get in the car and we pull out of the parking lot and we're driving by the driveway where the yeah. players come in and out and everything and we're at the stop the stop light there and we're waiting to go we're first in line and all of a sudden a police car comes up with the lights on i'm like oh man we're busted you know and i was, oh, I was just joking. yeah 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 I was I, there's no way that would have been for you yeah, yeah and and but anyway it comes up and he pulls alongside of us and i look over and it's brett Favre in the what? police car and i'm like <laughs> and i go I go to my buddy, I go, it's Brett Favre. He goes, yeah, right. And I go, no, it's Brett. And, yeah. and we turn and I go, I go, thank you for this. And Brett <laughs> gives us the thumbs up. The light turns green and the squad car goes away. And, and the story was um, he was going flying back to Mississippi yeah. and, and he got a police escort. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> You know, you touch on something really interesting when you're talking about players and their redundancy and their actions. But w- as a photographer, you know, these you're you're it's not like you always know you're photographing someone who maybe at the time they have a great game but you don't know where their career is going to go you don't know what's going to happen to them you've photographed athletes who have gone on to have phenomenal careers and you know russell wilson comes to mind or going going back to brett Favre, i photographed his first practice and no one knew who this guy was, you know, and no one knew how to pronounce you, his not name. Not even you, you didn't, I and, mean, no one did. And I, I was working at a small newspaper at the, it was my first real job. <laughs> um, yeah. And, uh, and, and I, I went down to shoot training camp and, and uh, I don't even know what the heck. Were you getting paid at that time or was it, it just It was before, I think it was before I started that job. I don't know how, anyway, it was, it was, um, they, they traded for him, whatever. And it was, a, it was a, a mini camp. And, and he comes in and I, I had to get at the time I was shooting for trading cards and, and stuff and I needed headshots and, yeah. and he's coming off the field. And, and, uh, I said, I go, how do you pronounce your name? You know, <laughs> Cause no one knew. How. Right. Cause it's not spelled yeah, like it sounds. Yeah, exactly. But, it looks like favor. And, yeah, and, but, and I even said that and he goes, yeah, you know, and, uh, yeah, but you're uh, getting close to a lot of these athletes, you know, it's specifically for college athletes that you are. Um, taking headshots of that you that you're photographing not just during the game but you're sometimes at a practice or you know you're 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 seeing these athletes grow over yeah. time that we don't and, recognize as being what they're going to end up being and sometimes the headshots sometimes it's the first time I meet these players and yeah. and and that's you know there, there's a lot of memorable. Uh, I remember the whole Russell Wilson season, yeah. his last, you know, senior year on, yeah. on the Badgers, you know, photographing with you, and that was a magical time. Russell, was, Russell was this anomaly where um, I didn't really know him, yeah. you know, and the first time I saw him was um, before he stepped onto the field. He he stood right in front of me, and I remember going, you know, he was listed at six foot, I think, and I'm yeah. and I'm I'm six feet. And I'm like, he's with his helmet on and spikes on, he wasn't taller than me. And, uh, and, but, but the thing was, I didn't really, that was really when social media just started, um, you know, back in the Rose Bowl days, I didn't know those guys. I didn't know any of them. And now most of them, you know, but that's not, that's not just, you know, something that you get to experience. It's how the industry has grown as a whole, because Mm -hmm. Sports now aren't just about the game, and you want yeah. to know who they're dating. You want to know. Oh, yeah. There's all this and, backstory. And going, of going like, back to the Favre shot with yeah. Tony Mall. Yeah. Um, this summer, I, I this summer or when Favre last year when Favre got into the uh, NFL Hall of Fame, what was that a couple of years ago? Whatever. Um, 
I was I went back through my archives and and I was doing some of my favorite photos and that was one of them, and and I go hey I wonder if this Tony Mall is on Instagram and I looked him up and he was and so I friended him you know or whatever and you follow him and this summer my wife and I went to Napa and Sonoma County um, to do a wine uh, tour thing and and uh, right before we were going literally a, a week before we were going or less than a week. Um, Tony posted something on his thing and it said three fat guy wines. And I'm like, what is this three fat guy wines? And I, I look it up and Tony, um, is, is, um, is just opened a, a wine tasting room mm. and, and, uh, all of a sudden, you know, I, I mentioned it to my wife and she's like, well, let's get a, a tasting and, and, uh, set up and so you know she set it up and and i the three fat guys the fat guys is a an, an nfl lineman and tony and uh uh two other rookies um yeah. were, were good friends and they they drank wine and tony is like fifth generation winemaker and so anyway i went and looked and i i looked up the photos and i had photos of all three of the linemen and i printed them out and and I, I brought him with me to to. Uh, Did you know you were going to see him? You didn't know. Well, my wife set up the wine tasting, and so and well, so. But you didn't know they would be there. Well, no, no. When you set up a wine tasting, you have a you have a scheduled appointment or right. whatever. Well, I knew you were you knew yeah. you were going to see someone. Yeah. You didn't yeah, know I didn't, what the situation well, I, was going to be. I knew be. Tony was going to be there, okay. and, and he All was right. doing the wine tasting. All right. And oh, I and see. Uh, so anyway. We get there. What I didn't know was it wasn't officially open yet. <laughs> oh, all and, right. and he was actually right. having family there that day. But he yeah. but he brought us in and you brought and the photos. We, we got the yeah. I brought the photos and then you get you know you're making the connection. I said you know this was my favorite play and yeah. and when we were kind of all wrapping it up and I go do you have any great stories of Brett you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, Brett Wait, did you bring some some like uh, print like large prints? oh yeah I brought yeah, large yeah, prints yeah, for yeah, him yeah. and uh, and of all three of the fat guys <laughs> yeah and uh, which by the way. Hey, we're going to be sponsored by yeah, three fat three guys fat wine, guys wine. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, tony doesn't know it yet yeah. but, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but it, it happens you know like the industry is just growing so rapidly because sports is becoming i mean not that it hasn't ever been but i mean i feel like more than ever sports is a part of our lives oh, yeah. and uh, again, it goes it, back to not even just watching the sports, but I mean, we're, we're learning stories about them off the, yeah. on and off the field or off the court. You know, we yeah. follow those stories the, beyond the, just the who sports. They, it's interesting because, um, my parents, um, they weren't the biggest sports fans. Um, I don't even know if, you know, uh, you started and, out with wildlife. Yeah, well, I had, yeah, well, my, <laughs> my sisters were older than me, 10 and 14 years yeah. older and they weren't really into sports. And, and so long I come and, and and then I get into the NFL, and so it's kind of they watch the games to see me, and and all of a sudden they become fans of you know ah. uh, of of and well. In when when you say to see you, you mean the TV production they're, is going to pass yeah, all they're gonna, the, everybody, yeah. all the photographers. It's they're, inevitable. They're it's playing. They're playing drinking games. You know, waiting <laughs> yeah. to see. There's Dave. Drink, By the way, you're you always know. wearing that hat. I yeah. don't know if we can see that it, in the background. This is a different color, but right, uh, you're always wearing I, some sort of tilly, tilly hat. hat. Yeah, um, you've, it's become something you've been known for. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and it 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 has taken a life of its own. or Whatever. <laughs> Does um, the tilly hat have its own Instagram account now? Your nah, tilly hat. It should I probably have to think about that. <laughs> People follow dog yeah. accounts. I mean, get, but get I mean the, a, the hat. I mean the hat. The one thing is uh, you're always wearing hats and wearing a baseball yeah. cap. You can't shoot verticals. The hat's always yeah. tipping. You get the But I mean, burn. it has become a way to spot you. It has become, it's become, it, it's more of a necessity. The biggest thing is it's for sun. It's, yeah. it protects you for rain. It protects the back I of your neck. I can't tell you how many times as, as your assistant, you know, at a football game, I'm yeah. looking for you on the other side of the yeah. field and there's so many people there. How do yeah. I find you? And, that, and that's, that's another thing that, that it's, it, that helps, you yeah. know, and there's not a lot of people, thank goodness, that a lot of people don't wear them. Um, <laughs> well, we're going to start yeah. because we're also sponsored by Tilly. So yeah. they're, they don't know it yet either, but it's going to happen. There, there was a security guard one time and he was commenting on my hat and he goes, I should get a hat like that. And I said, sir, I go, that would be a bad <laughs> idea. I go, everybody would think you would be me and we really might mess things up. Um, but. No, but I mean, it's so exciting to see, um, you know, the, the, the adventures that you go on and, and you're not just doing home games. Sometimes you're going with the teams. Yeah. Um, you know, you go with the Badgers to, you know, for example, who knows what's going to happen in March madness. Yeah. This episode is coming out in March. So you'll be just on the, on the, uh, front toe, front I don't heel, know how many back years. heels of, of, you know, that's another thing. Um, 
when I started, you know, 91 was the first year I started and I was, I was living in Illinois, Illinois at the time. And I, 92, I moved to Wisconsin and or back to Wisconsin after school. And, um, I started shooting for UPI at United Press International mm -hmm. and, and, uh, journalistically. Yeah. And, yeah. and I was shooting, I, I had a dark room. I had built a dark room yeah. and, and I was shooting, um, Badger games and, and yeah. I got a press pass and I got a parking pass and, and I, I remember I lost the parking pass and I, I went to the Badgers and I said, Hey, are you guys need anything? And, and, uh, he said, well, actually we do. And, you know, he, he told me what he needed and I gave it to him and, and that started my relationship. The next year, all of a sudden, the Badgers, um, you know, it was Barry's second year in 92. The third year was the year they went to the Rose Bowl. And, and uh, um, you know, I, that was my first year shooting for the Badgers. So this is year 27, 27 years later. And I never thought, you know, when, when you're starting to shoot out, you know, you're starting out and, and I'm shooting for the Badgers and they weren't that great and they were starting to become good. And that was the same thing with the Packers. They weren't that good at the time. And so people needed, you know, back in the day before digital, it was film and it was expensive to, to shoot games. And um, Well, you say they weren't that good, but um, there's two sides to this coin and I actually want to hear your answer to both about, um, you know, you, your job is to photograph a game, whether win or lose. Mm -hmm. So when you spend the time getting the shots at a game and everybody's excited, it's the event, you know, it, it's a full house and the team that you're there to photograph specifically loses, oh, yeah. you know, there's lots of, there, there, well, the, the biggest thing is like if for an NFL you're game, deflated immediately. Yeah, if for an NFL game, you're there, I'm covering it differently than I cover a Badger game right. in the sense that yeah. I'm, in some ways, I'm covering it photojournalistically, generically, but I'm but I'm also covering it commercially. That's what um, I meant, commercially. Yeah, yeah. and and uh, well, and I'm speaking specifically yeah. about but, about but the college. When, but like, sports. if the Packers lose, yeah, um, you, you want to, you know, I photograph the other team, or I do, you know, yeah. But or you whatever. were talking earlier about you get to be places that people don't normally yeah. get to be. You're sometimes you're on the plane or on the bus with these guys after yeah. they just lost a big yeah. game, and everyone's, you know. They they immediately just have that that energy oh, yeah. of defeat, and you feel you and you're feel, sitting there editing photos on oh, the yeah. bus or the yeah. plane from that game, and they don't yeah. want to look at yeah, it. Exactly. You know, um, you you feel, and that's the other difference is when you when you're shooting for a team, you're shooting it a totally different way, and and uh, um, and on a lot of times when they lose those big games. Yeah. You know, to me, like, you know, Oregon at the Rose Bowl, Oregon's off celebrating. And, and like, if I was covering the game as, you know, as an NFL game, I'm going to be shooting those celebration shots. Yeah. And, and, but I'm shooting for the Badgers. So, right. you know, they don't want that stuff. And, and, I, don't, and I always feel like it's a betrayal. <laughs> I go, yeah, I'm going to go over and, you know. Um, so, see, you're yeah. sitting next to and a even, player. And I, I even see, and the even, even the players, when they're coming off, I have a hard time photographing them. Because they're seeing me, I'm seeing them in a bed, and sometimes they don't want to see that. Yeah. And and I think later on, you know, maybe you know, I I always I see all the 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 newspaper photographers, and I'm like, oh man, that is a great image, you know, yeah. of of those two players walking off the field for the last time, and at a Rose Bowl, and and you lost, but you're there. He's there with his brother, you know, and and that's a that's a relationship that those guys have. Yes, and and uh, so I, it's always a it's a double edged sword for me. Um, there's there's the other know. side of the coin too, which yeah. is I've been to games where not until like halfway through you feel the magic kicking oh, in yeah. and oh, it yeah. goes the way you want it to go, and even up to you know buzzer beater games, yeah. there's a certain energy and magic that happens in the, the room that you feel history is being made. You, you know, know the, you this game those. the other night, um, you know. I was it 13 seconds and we're yeah. losing, you know, and, and, uh, how are they going to pull this one out? And you're kind of thinking, man, you go into the self doubt. Yeah, you're like, yeah, oh, you let's know, wrap like, this oh, up. Man, they, they had a loss. <laughs> There's here. no way yeah. at all. This is going to happen. And how are they going to do this? The, yeah. the one that happened, the, the Ben brushed the shot. Yes. Um, that Classic. One, yeah. That one, yeah. that one, <clears throat> I was shooting the game on the other end of the court, the whole game. I shot offense on one and defense on the other. <clears throat> and, uh, I remember, um, and, and it was crowded, the, the sidelines, every photographer was there. Yeah. And, and all of a sudden, um, we're leading the game the whole way, and all of a sudden, uh, Michigan hits this three-pointer to take the lead with 
2.3 seconds or whatever it was. I don't know. And, and all of a sudden you're like just devastated. Yep. You're like, oh my gosh, we had this game one. And, and then I remember, the and, and, and there's a timeout yep. and I remember going, Hey, I'm on the wrong end. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> if, uh, if it yeah, happens. I go, and, and I, I come down to the other end of the court and I, and I, I look down there and, and there is no, no place for me to be. Yeah. And I, and I, I walk past the radio, um, uh, where the, the announcers, they, yeah, the announcers, yeah. and there's this little spot. It's it's about a foot, <laughs> yeah, that you can walk between, right. and and it, it's the mid court, yeah, and yeah. It, and it's uh, um, the the front row fans are right there, and yeah, and and here's a situation where I'm not supposed to be there, yeah. for one. Were, and, did you and, have a feeling about something? Well, I, I just you, I, I'm, I'm just I'm just prepare. Going, I'm, I'm just trying to prepare, and I'm trying yeah. to look, and I go and I go, hey. You know, Charlie was the guy that was sitting there. And I yeah. said, hey, Charlie, can I sneak in here? And he goes, come on in, Dave. You know, and yeah. he, he's, he moves over for me. And, I get, and, I, and I'm standing and I go, security sees me standing here. They're going to boot me out. So I kneel down to, to get out of the way. And, and then I'm planning. All of a sudden, I'm like, okay, I, the basket's over here. And I'm like, wait a minute. They're inbounding the ball down in this end. And I go, now I got I to gotta point yeah. this way. But now yeah. I got to be able to swing this yeah. way. And you don't, yeah. you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. And, and uh, um, you're preparing and, for, yeah. for whatever. Yeah. And they're the inbounding the ball. And it's, you know, you get five seconds to inbound it. And it's like yeah. four, three, two. And, and yeah. the guy leans forward. And just as um, uh, he, he, he's almost losing his balance and he had to inbound yeah. the ball. And there's a wheel route going. And he throws it to Bruss at half court. And, and he catches the ball and he launches it. And he, he, Catches he, he launches the ball and I, I got the shot where he's launching it and then I'm on strobe so I have three seconds in between frames mm -hmm. and so I take one picture and, strobe goes off yeah and you're like one two three you know you're trying to you know you're trying <laughs> to hurry how much it, time you know, yeah you know but you're trying to hold it <laughs> and he comes flying by me and the ball goes in and Ben runs by me and he's got his arms up in the air and and the Michigan guy is doing this and the yeah. bench is going like this. Bo Ryan's got his arms up in the air, yeah. you know, all, all these people and people, you can see in the third deck people with their arms up in the air. And, but I remember before that you go back and I'm walking down the court and I'm looking for a spot and I'm, I'm realizing I'm in a bad, and I'm like, oh man, we had this game one. How did we lose it? I'm like, wait a minute, it's not over yet. We could win. I don't yeah. know, we couldn't win it. We could only tie. tie. <laughs> so you have to hit a, you have to hit a half court shot, at, you know, yeah. uh, to tie the game. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. and so, you know, so now like, like, what if we hit this? Oh man, this would be amazing. You know? And then they're like, well, oh, no, what if we, if we miss it, man, it's going to be somber. You know, you're, you're going through all these things and I go, wait a minute, he could make this, you know? And so you're, yeah. you're going through all these things and not knowing that's the, the, I don't know if you call it the beauty or the, the magic, I the magic or yeah. the curse that if it happens, it's going to be magical, but yeah. wait, it's not going to be a game winner, but it's going to be magical, you know? And I go, can you imagine if this, if this happens, this place is going to go crazy. And, and, but uh, you can feel that. You oh, can yeah, feel the yeah. tension in there. Oh yeah. So, yeah. so, you know, you're, you're thinking all these things, boom, it happens. That is the loudest I've ever heard that place. And yeah. I, and I always say that was the biggest shot during the regular season. Yeah. It wasn't a playoff. They didn't have a great year yeah. that year, but but that play, man, talk about the other uh, last night or Tuesday night coming uh over and packing up and everything and and uh, Matt LePay is yelling across court to Ben Brust was up there and, yeah. and, and well, all of a sudden a, he yeah, goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, he goes, Hey, you need to reenact that shot, yeah. you know, and, and they're, they're joking. And, and then you hear Matt say, yeah. Hey, you need to sign that photo of, you know, and I'm like, that was my photo, you know? And, uh, yeah. but, but the, the thing is that to this day that that is the shot, you but know, you don't, I mean, you, you have a sense mm. of what that shot's going to be. Obviously when you're taking it, you're I framing hadn't, it up, I hadn't, I hadn't, but you had no idea what had, it was going to become no and how, and what, and you know, and, the, the and, and then, have, and then, and the then impact the, the, that photo would have. Yeah. And, and then, and the beauty of that shot is when you, you know, I, I have a big canvas print of it and, and I showed it to Bo Ryan and I said, uh, I go, Bo, you know, his arms are up in the air and he goes, well, I never did. He go, I go, so everybody said you'd never did that. And he goes, I never did that because, um, you know, you always had things to go. He goes, the, the game, you know, the clock was done and, yeah. and he had his arms up in the air and, and, and the bench is going crazy and the fans are going crazy. And I, and I call it these O faces and everybody's like, oh, yeah. you know, like this, but then yeah. there's two photographers underneath where I would normally sit. They were from Michigan and they had the O faces where they were going, 
<laughs> you know, like, and uh, is that the one where the one player had his hands? Yeah. Well, up no, like the, the father. There was a father and a daughter, and oh, and, and that's and the other thing the too. You can see in the crowd. His, yeah, all the, these fa- people. the father's got his head down. I'm at the, the player on the field, just yeah. like yeah. The, the player's got his arms up in the air, <laughs> and you know, like what? So you beautiful. Know? It's yeah. so amazing. And 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 it, and, it, and the beauty of the the other beauty of that shot is the people. There was a guy that that um, that saw that play happening and everything yeah. and and he said he goes i was in the third you know section and i was directly in line with ben in the basket and he goes i knew that ball was going in the second it left his hands you know and so you're you're talking people even people that weren't there they knew where they were that day yeah. you know and people yeah. on campus said they could actually hear the coal center <laughs> and, and, and uh, um, that's pretty cool and, though but and, and it's and it's it's Photos like yours that help people remember those oh, yeah. moments and yeah. those memories. And that, that's, you know, that's the beauty of what I do is that's when you realize I don't, I've never thought of myself as a historian, Yeah. Um, but it just happens, but you're recording, because it's live you're recording. And the other, event. the other thing I wanted to make is, is I have been so incredibly lucky, you know, you talk about being in the right place at the right time. I walk in in 91 and, and I'm shooting NFL, and the Packers aren't that great, and the Badgers are just starting out. And I've, I've shot the Badgers for 27 years, and they've won every year. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and over that time, and, and I, had a, I have a good friend that was a team photographer for the Rams you know, for like five years, and they never want to play. They never got to the playoffs. Right. And, and, and I'm, I'm thinking back, man, you know, there's a few times we lose games, and those are bummer. Can you imagine losing games all the time and not having that jubilation of we won a game and and all this? And and that's what the photos are. You don't look at the the game. I mean, the, usually the teams don't even want to see the photos of the games they lost. Yeah. Um, but the games you won and the jubilation yeah. and and the celebration and the memories and the memories. Yeah. Um, and and uh, that's it's pretty wonderful. No, yeah. it's pretty great. Where, now, because we've talked about so many, so many of your of your photos here in, in your collection, where and we also didn't get any time to talk about your iPhone. Well, we did. We took a picture. <laughs> uh, where can people go? Speaking of iPhone, and oh, these, Instagram, I have a couple. Do you know accounts. what the name of your account is? How uh, we look you up? David, You'll be tagged in the description David below. David Sluka at David Sluka. Yeah, and then at Insta Sluka is my kind of my personal account. So yeah. kind of my arts. I was an art major in in. Uh, yeah. And, uh, so it's a place you can go to, yeah. to. You got two different accounts for two different reasons. <laughs> no, but you're always taking photos, and that's fantastic. Yeah. So you you just keep going. And, are we uh, out? Of, are we out of time? Well, see now we got now you we tricked here because we got one extra I, overflow. I, I, I saw that time tick down. And I have to go to the bathroom. So now all of a sudden the urgency. He's been he's no, putting it in his mind. Uh, all right. Um, well, no worries, Dave. But it's been great having yeah, you on, and uh, we'll have all your information tagged below that people awesome. can check out all your work. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's so fun listening to these stories. Yeah, it's fun. fantastic. Well, thank all you. All right. Well, thanks, man, and uh, we'll see you later. On Wisconsin and go pack go. Creative Side Up is an Edgeline Studios production. Thanks for listening, and we hope you join us again soon. <laughs>